allowed people and yielding to foreign influence they felt that anyone who was a foreigner was an ajnami, inarticulate and unexpressive and anyone who challenged their authority of pagan ways was put to sword or put to flight Jews lived amongst them and Christians dominated in surrounding lands but neither the Torah nor the Bible ever swayed their minds or their hearts yet notwithstanding all of these daunting circumstances when the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, started preaching to his people the sublime and powerful message of the Holy Quran slowly conquered their minds and melted their hearts examples of abound in Islamic history some of them are well known Hazrat Omar, Allah be pleased with him, a bold and fearless man left his home in the morning determined to kill the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, but he returned back at night prepared to die for him Samama bin Asr despised the Holy Prophet and detested going anywhere near Medina but in a brief span of two days he went from being a bitter enemy of Islam to becoming one of the blessed companions of Islam Asad bin Zarada an influential, uh, influential chief of Medina one day planned to expel from the city Masab bin Omer the first missionary of Islam yet a short time later he himself accepted Islam at the hand of this missionary these are example of men who were humbled as Quran said Hashia and then there's the case of Jabeb ibn Mutram, a Meccan disbeliever who was standing by observing very dispassionately the Maghrib prayer, the evening prayer of the Holy Prophet. And before the prayer concluded, he suddenly became so deeply impressed and so overwhelmed by fear that he thought his heart would stop. This is the, sin, the, the sense of mutasaddiya min khashyatullah that they are leveled because of fear of God even a neighboring non-Arab king Ashma Najasi the Christian ruler of Ethiopia reversed 360 degrees from preparing to deport a delegation of Muslim refugees to granting them full asylum and publicly affirming their views about Jesus in all of these cases what was the common denominator, denominator, the factor that produced these remarkable transformations? It was their first hand and first time experience of hearing recitation of passages of the Holy Quran. The message of the Holy Quran was simply irresistible. Even to men who have the greatest pride, the greatest passion, and the greatest power. There is a quote by William Congreve that says, Music soothes the savage beast. And he goes on to say, To soften rocks or bend a knotted oak. This is, indeed is a perfect description of the Holy Quran. It is like music to soothe and calm the soul and the mind and soften the heart. The capacity of the Quran to transform people unexpectedly and dramatically is not relegated just to the past that legacy continues even till today we have seen in the case recently even here in England of Yvonne Ridley a British journalist who in 2001 attempted to sneak into Afghanistan only to be captured by the Taliban discussing her ordeal she said I was horrible to my captors I spat at them I was rude and refused to eat. She was not going to be cowed into submission and silence like so many women in that nation. Fearing for her life, the world exhaled, exhaled a sigh of relief when she, was, she gained freedom 11 days later. Only to gasp in complete surprise and shock when she herself became a Muslim. What had happened? They thought she had lost her mind. But the fact was, she had made a promise to one of her captors that when she returned home, she would read the Holy Quran. And as she read the Holy Quran, she realized that every single thing in this book went against the teachings that was being practiced by the Taliban against women. And she said in her own words, quote, 
The Quran is a Magna Carta for women. As a result, she, a hard-nosed journalist, a defiant prisoner of the Taliban, became another loving daughter of Islam and vocal advocate for this Muslim community. Islam! Islam! These are the many blessings that we receive through the Word of God, the Holy Quran. It is a book whose attributes are mentioned in many passages to describe itself. I will briefly and very briefly for my time is about up mention just some of the qualities of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran is Al-Kitab, the preserved book. It is also the Anur, it is the light. The Holy Quran is the light upon light mentioned in the Holy Quran. It is that life that brought Europe out of the age of darkness into the enlightenment and into scientific progress. It is that light that Hazrat Musa -Islam, said would shine forth from Mount Paran as shine from China all the way to the America. It was the Muslims who taught Columbus that the world is not flat, it is round, and therefore sent him across the ocean to discover, explore the new world and begin a new era for Europe and that continent. It is this Quran that gave light to sciences and is this Quran that has been the source, as Prophesy says, the more progress and development there is in the physical sciences, the more the beauties and grandeur of the Quran shall also come to light. As he said in his couplet, Nuri Fuqan had, Joseph Nurun say Ajla Nikla, Pak just say wo Anwar Kadadia Nikla. That this is the source of light coming from that holy source, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will conclude with reference to the works again of Hazrat Prophet Islam that we are all being blessed with in this gathering. This gathering is one of the signs of the greatest miracle which the promised Messiah has brought to mankind once again. The miracle according to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, was the Quran. It is the Quran that transforms people, brings them from the depth of ignorance and immorality to the heights of spirituality and union with God and makes a beast into a man, a man into a moral being, a moral being into a spiritual light that he says, Ashabi Kanajum, now they are like stars, any single one of them. These are the 10,000 saints who returned back with Prophet Muhammad to Mecca that caused the majestic movement of Islam from that point up to now, moving all across this world into our nations into our homes, into our hearts. We should become the pillars of Islam, the lights of Islam, as this image behind me on the board shows, the Quran descended in Mecca, but moved, moved into Qadian, is being shown throughout the world now by the grace of God. We should be what the Prophet Islam wanted in this day and age. Those who like Hazrat Maldi Nuruddin had such love for Quran, that they would say, all they are is Quran. May that be the case. May we be like Hazrat Mawdi Nur Deen and be the source, the minarets to spread Islam throughout the world. Inshallah, ameen. Wal akhri da'awana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Nare Nare Ghulam Ahmed ki! Ghulam Ahmed ki! Ghulam Ahmed ki! جزاکم اللہ خیرن اب ایک اور تقریر ہوگی آخری تقریر ہے